Well, welcome once again to our kitchen here at Trails N62. We have some spaghetti squash that we grew in our garden, and we're going to dehydrate them. Now, I dehydrate because I found out that dehydrating is a whole lot better than freezing. And I do the same thing with my zucchini. So we're going to dehydrate these spaghetti squash. We're going to get them fixed up and, uh, and ready to go. And we've already done part of these. And now we're going to finish up what we had uh, for our season. We had about 16 of them, and so we're going to get these ready. Our first step, of course, is to wash the produce. These came from my garden. You don't want to wash them when you first put them in storage. Uh, when you want to store them, they will last several months because they're winter squash in a cool, dark place. And they will even ripen as some of these have. But you don't want to wash them off. Uh, because you're liable to destroy the, the natural coating that's on these. All right, we're ready to go. I'm going to do my big one here. I'm going to save these seeds because this is my largest one and it was ripe when I picked it. And uh, there are several ways to do these or several ways that, that you can find how to cook them, how to prepare them and everything. So I'm going to just show you my way. And this is the way I do it, and I like to do it this way, mainly because, uh, you know, I look for the easiest, simplest way to do things. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this end. You have to have a nice, good, sharp knife. These skins are very tough. You have to be careful you don't cut yourself. So, I'm going to cut off the stem end. Like I said, they're tough, and they're supposed to be. That's why they're winter squash, and that's why they're preserved. Then I'm going to take that flattened end that I cut off, and I'm going to set it up. And that's why I cut it off mainly, just so that it'll set up. Alright. Our next step is to cut it in half. Now, like I say, there are several ways that you can do this. People have different methods. I take mine, I set it up, and then I start at the top. And I just kind of rock my knife back and forth to get it into it. The squash and then I let it cut down and like I said these are tough be very careful and we cut it in half there we go uh, now it looks like a lot of my seeds have already started sprouting out and that's because they've been been kept in here for a while all right, so next thing we do, we take a nice big spoon, heavy spoon, because you got to scrape this out. Some people cook them first. I like to scrape mine out first. Take all the stringy stuff out there that seeds are in. That's not part of the spaghetti squash when they're raw. That's part of the seed stuff. Then we have a drink of coffee. because it is early morning. Now, while I'm doing these, we're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. Now, here are the seeds that I picked out to save because this is a heritage heirloom variety that I planted. Normally, what you would do is you would leave it in the pulp, cover it with water for about two days, then take it out and wash the seeds off and just set them out to dry on a piece of newspaper or paper plate and then let them dry. And they'll be viable eh, probably up to four years, but you have to let the, the squash mature and then you need to let it set and harden for a couple of weeks before you take it out. Now I picked these out individually because there were so many that were already sprouting in there so I'm gonna put them in the water here didn't clean them off I just picked them out and I'll leave them here for about two days and then I will set them out and let them dry and they'll be ready to go I'll put them in a sealed bag and hopefully they'll be viable for the next four years all right here we have our squash all laid out and, uh, we've got them on cookie sheets covered with foil and both shiny side is up because that helps it cook better. And we're going to run these at uh, 350 degrees 
You can do them anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour this way uh, with the uh, the baking time. But since there's more since there's more squash in the oven, and you're not just doing a single squash. It'll take a little bit longer because there's more to absorb the heat. So we're probably going to do these. There'll be two layers of them. We're looking at probably 50 minutes, 55 minutes for this many of them. And this is the simple way. Once they're cooked and baked this way, then we'll be able to get the spaghetti out of them and we'll go on to dehydrate them. But these will go in the oven at 350 degrees for about 50 minutes, maybe 55 minutes. All right, I actually let these go for 60 minutes. Let them go for 60 minutes because I wanted to make sure they were done. And I'm going to set them out cool for a little bit. Alright, we'll allow them to cool for a little bit because they are really hot. So I've got them set out, going to let them cool. And like I said, I actually did them for 60 minutes because I wanted to make sure that they were well cooked. And right now they're well hot. So we'll let them cool and then we'll come back and show you what we do next. Alright, so because these were different sizes, there are different degrees of, of doneness in the squash but that's okay they're all cooked where I can scrape them out and this is one of the smaller ones and to scrape it you have to start scraping it across the squash just scrape it out with a fork and by scraping it across you get your longest strands of spaghetti although with a small one like this it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference they're going to be small anyway but you scrape it one direction scrape it out and you turn it over scrape it the other direction again doing a cross that'll get you your longest strands and again this is a small one so and then once you've done that you're down to the husk you can do it in any direction you want to to get the ends of it out you're scraping all of the meat out of the inside of it. So that we get all the spaghetti squash we can. I'm going to take my spaghetti squash and I'm going to put it on my trays. I use round ones round dehydrators because that's what I have, they're Nesco. This is my oldest one. I like this one best because for this kind of thing because it has this center that keeps things from falling down the hole. This is a bottom flow dehydrator. I have a top flow dehydrator with a circle here. There's nothing there. It's just a hole. So with things that might fall through like this then I like to use this one and then plus it's got an adjustable heat. These are the mesh that I have here. One came with the dehydrator and these are just uh, craft uh, grids that I bought at Walmart and cut them into circles and cut the hole out and make them fit. They weren't exactly wide enough so I had to make these little slivers to fit in and I just lay the squash out on the trays. Now I spread my squash pretty thin I don't like to put too much, but two reasons. You can put it thicker, but this way it it dehydrates faster. And I just spread it out there. And usually I can put oh probably one medium size squash per tray is what I do. I may do a couple of little squashes, but this is the other half of that one. It's a medium size one. And as you can see, it did almost half the tray. That's the way I like to put them on there, not too much on a tray. All right, I'm going to do the rest of these. Get them shredded up, put on the dehydrators. As you can see, I have eight trays. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
that's the maximum number of trays that these kind of dehydrators are recommended to take. I could buy more trays and make it higher, but the maximum amount that it recommends is eight trays. So I'm going to stop at eight trays. That's all I ever do in one dehydrator because I like to make sure that it gets done properly. And the key is to make sure when you do this that you spread out your squash so that it is even on all the trays because you want them to dehydrate evenly. So throughout the trays you need to make sure that it's evenly and you want them basically evenly distributed and each tray basically the same. I've tried to make this almost just one layer thick. Uh, I will dehydrate these at about 130 degrees somewhere between 130 and 135 degrees. Uh, for seven to eight hours is what it took last time to do this so and I had uh, I think I only had five trays no or six trays so I'm going to do this and I've, I've got all but my half of my large one on there and this is the smaller half of the large one and what I'll do is I'll shred that out and and uh, pop it in some boiling water for a few minutes later on tonight put some marinara sauce on it and we'll have uh, for supper later tonight. So I'm going to get these on the dehydrator. I'll dehydrate them at, like I said, about 100 and between 130 135 degrees. Between 130 and 135 degrees in my dehydrator. And seven, seven to eight hours is what it'll take for these. Spread this thin. Now, the thicker that you layer it on there, and you can layer it on there thicker, the thicker you lay it on there, the longer it will take. And you may have to stir it up a little bit as you get along. So Make sure that you pay attention to it. It should be dry and brittle. And uh, I usually, I package mine up. Each tray I package up individually into a Ziploc bag and then I put it into a container and that's how I store this kind of dehydrated material. And to rehydrate this, to use it, you pour boiling water over it, let it set over it and, and, uh, and reconstitute. Then you drain it and use it just like spaghetti. If it's not quite done, and sometimes that happens, if it's not quite done enough for you, then boil a little bit, maybe stick it this in a microwave a little pasta. bit. All right. So don't eat this like you think this is going to taste like pasta. It's not. It's a vegetable. It's not pasta. So it will have a little bit of different texture to it, uh, even when it's cooked properly. Nevertheless, it's quite good. Uh, I really like it, even just this much cooked. Mm. It's got a great flavor to it. A little marinara sauce on that. Or you might just want to put some butter on it. You might want to put some Alfredo sauce on it. Uh, butter and herbs. You know, some basil, some... some uh, uh, Italian herbs, something like that on it, and some butter, just some hot melted butter, and uh, it's it's great. Healthy for you, good for you, not that I pay much attention to good for you, I just do it if I like it. So, we're going to get this dehydrated, and then we'll let you see how it turns out. Alright, seven and a half hours, we dehydrated, and it might have been just a little longer than it needed. As you can see, it's pretty well dehydrated. And what I do is I just kind of put it over a bowl here and I peel it off into the bowl. Sometimes it comes off in pieces, sometimes it comes off. All right, well, I'll bunch. take it and then I will. I have a little handy dandy bag holder here. I put my plastic, put my bag, and then I'll put it down into the bag. Squeeze the air out of it and zip tie it or zip lock it because I'm going to crumble it up anyway. And then I got these handy dandy little containers here. I get these at Sam's Club. And I will take and I will put two bags per container. I put them in these. I seal it. They seal up pretty good. I tried the cheapy, cheapy ones, and they just don't seal. And you want that to seal pretty good. You want that lid popping off. So I put two of them in there, and then I will mark it with a piece of tape. And it says 
spaghetti squash on it. I don't know if you can read that or not, but that's what it says, spaghetti squash. And put them in there, and then I'll put them in in a cool, dark place. And that's the dehydrating the spaghetti or spaghetti squash. And like I said, this one tray it had some on it that wasn't quite done. I probably won't go back and dehy dehydrate that. I'm just going to use that one to rehydrate and see what it comes out like uh, rehydrated, except for that little bit that wasn't dehydrated. And I'll rehydrate that and, and bring it back out and I'll, I'll test it out, see how it comes. So we'll finish up the video with that. And, oh, and I do wear gloves when I handle dehydrated food. Uh, so they don't get any moisture onto the food or anything like that. All right. We'll finish out this video. We'll rehydrate that spaghetti squash and see how she tastes. Okay, we're ready to try out some of our dehydrated spaghetti squash. Now, what I did was I took a bag. You know, I had that little bit that didn't quite get all the way dry. There's a little bit in it, but anyway, the bag about like this. This is a, just a quart Ziploc bag. And that's uh, one tray that I put in there, and that's what I put. I've had it in the refrigerator until I got ready to use it. But that's anyway, that's what I had dehydrated. And this is what it reconstituted as. I put it in, in hot water, hot tap water, and let it set for about 20 minutes. And then I took this, put filled it back up with water, and I put it into the microwave to heat it so it heated back up and this is what we get the butter the garlic the Italian seasoning that's good mm. what can I say loving it all right well that's the dehydrated spaghetti squash you can buy this at the store the spaghetti squash dehydrate yourself save it you know if it's on sale get a bunch of it dehydrated it's good you can have it anytime rehydrate it put some marinara sauce on it you know spaghetti sauce type stuff whatever you want to put on it or just the garlic butter and then italian seasoning that's always good or you can eat it just plain a little salt something like that a little seasoning if you don't like salt you know there's a lot of different ways you can do it so, I'm going to finish this off. From our house, your house. God bless.